in this video we are going to discuss a very nice trick of uh, logic of fluid mechanics in which the questions in which container starts rotating this is going to be very very useful so let's see so here the scenario is that if uh, there's a container cylindrical container i'm taking of radius r and height h you can see then why i have highlighted this in blue color i'll tell you later first this is a cylindrical container of radius r and height h if this container starts rotating about its central axis with a constant omega, then profile becomes like that, right? So this, I hope you know this. I'm going to explain here later also. So if you know this, so what is the important result? If you remember that result, and it's very easy to remember that result, then these questions are going to be very, very easy for you. You can just write the solution in one line. So what happens if this is the original level, right? And when the container starts rotating, then the point, the amount by which the level goes down, if that is A, and the amount by which the level goes up with respect to the original level, if that is B, then A comes out to be equal to B. Right? So very important yet very simple result. Right? So let's just prove this very quickly and then we will apply this in questions and see how we can solve the questions very easily, just in one line. So let's first prove this now. So when container starts rotating with constant omega, right? Liquid surface becomes parabolic. I'm talking about 2D cross section. So this is the diagram with respect to, now how do we prove this? Uh, I hope you know this already, but very quickly we can discuss that also. If suppose you are standing on the container, then uh, with respect to you, actually the observer should be here, rotating observer. Yeah, so uh, I have to put the observer here because I'm going to apply centrifugal force, not here. Okay, so I'll just remove this and put the observer here, right, over the axis. So free surface will be perpendicular to the effective gravity that we know because the very, very important property of liquids which differentiate liquids from the solid is that liquids can not sustain shear stress. Shear stress is the stress which acts parallel to the surface in equilibrium. So liquids can resist shear stress only when they are moving. Otherwise, they can't. So always free surface will be perpendicular to the effective gravity or net force or in other words you can say the same thing is that if this is the free surface then along the surface in equilibrium net force has to be zero right if liquid is at rest with respect to container or with respect to this observer then along the surface net force has to be zero so if i take a dm mass centrifugal force is dm omega square x x is this distance right so and then dmg as usual will act downward then if you equate the forces along the surface, then 10 theta will come out to be this, right? A by G. 10 theta is dy by dx. If you integrate this, you get this, right? I hope you know this already. So y is equal to omega square x square by 2g. So that's, that's the profile, equation of this profile. Fine, so that's one thing. It was a very quick revision because you already knew this. Now in 3D, this will look like this. So you can refer to this very nice picture. So this is a paraboloid. In 3D, it looks like this. Volume of this is half pi r square h, right? So here, what is r? r is the radius of this and h is, of course, height of that, right? So this result also, you can remember, this also I've given a proof in the end because it's a purely mathematical proof I have uh, given in the end. So if you remember this, it's again going to be very, very helpful. So let us see this now. Let us prove A equal to B. So this was the this line you see is the original level right when container starts rotating then this is the bottommost point here of profile and this is the topmost point now what i'm going to do is see i have already highlighted here see this one this volume the volume which i'm uh, highlighting right now this volume is going to be occupied by this volume this reason here Correct. Because before this, below this line, see this below this line, it's exactly same liquid. So this volume was occupied by the blue color liquid right now, highlighted in blue color. Now when the container starts rotating, this some amount will go and fill here, right? So this volume I'm going to equate with this, both highlighted in blue color, right? This volume, you know, pi r square h, right? Now what is, how do we calculate this, right? So let's see there. 
So here, this volume is, this was the original one, right? In this diagram, that was pi r square a, right? Pi r square h, volume of the cylinder. Now we want to know the volume of this part, the volume which is there in this, here this section, and here it is in this section. So what we can do, volume of the paraboloid we know, which is volume of the paraboloid is this, right? That is half pi r square h, we know. So if we subtract this half pi r square from the cylinder of radius r and height, b plus a, right? So it is exactly this. So I'm talking about the cylinder, which has the radius of r and height of a plus b. From that only, the paraboloid is taken. So this volume we want to know, right? So I'm going to subtract from the cylinder volume minus the paraboloid volume, which is half pi r square a plus b. That's going to give us a equal to b, right? So it's very, very simple. Fine, now let us see how do we solve the questions using this, just in one line. So three types of question, three cases. In one case, when container is half filled, this is also h, this is also h. We have to find max omega so that liquid will not spill out of the container, right? So now if liquid max omega, right? So limiting case we have to take when, when liquid just comes to the topmost point or brim to this container, okay? So if liquid profile comes here, that means from the original level, it has to go up by h. But from the previous result, we know that if from original level, if it goes up by h, it has to go down also by h, right? So immediately you can draw this diagram then. Goes up by h, goes down by h, this diagram, right? Very, very easy. And then use this, right? Phi equal to omega square x square by 2g. This is this equation, or this is the profile taking the vortex as origin. So y equal to what? 2h, right? x equal to r, we get omega as 4gh by r square, right? Just in one line. Another case is when liquid is filled more than half. So this case, right? This is very easy. You can very easily visualize this. So again, max omega we are finding. Max omega means the topmost point should go here. So from original level, if it goes up by h1, it will go down also by h1. So profile becomes like this, same answer. So h is replaced by h1, right? Same equations. And even if h1 is greater than s2, what's going to happen now? So container is empty. If more than 50% of the volume, the container is empty. So in that case, the profile will be like this, right? The vortex will go down, even though there is no liquid here. But still, it is going to follow H1. This It goes up by H1, goes down by H1, right? You can imagine the liquid here. So H1 and H1. Again, omega is this, right? Now, in this, we can also find out the area of exposed surface. So area of exposed surface is, how do we find? See, this part is now, see the highlighted part here. This part is now visible, right? When container is rotating with that omega. So if this part is visible, this x we need to find out. So to find out this x, again, we can use y equal to omega square x square by 2g. But then what is y here? This is, see, this was the original level, goes up by h, goes down by h, right? So here, this is h1. The entire thing is h1. Correct. But this is S2. So this is only H1 minus S2. So you can put H1 minus S2 here and you get area as this exposed liquid. Right. So that's it. These are the questions. If you just remember one result equal to B from the free surface, the amount by which it goes down is the same as the amount by which it goes up. Right. So very simple result, but very, very useful. Okay, so in last, as promised, I'm going to show you the uh, volume of paraboloid also. So this is a paraboloid here. What I'm going to do, this is the equation of cross section, y equal to, you can just write it as y equal to ax square, right? So, and then find the value of a by putting x equal to r and y equal to h. You're going to get this equation, right? Radius is r and height is h. Then uh, to find out the volume, we can divide this into disk. So volume of the disk is pi x square into d by right? And y now x square, we can substitute here, integrate from 0 to h, you are going to get pi r square h by 2, right? So that's it. That was my analysis. If you find this video, if you're finding this video useful, please share with this, share with your friends and please hit the like button. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. All the best.